Hello and welcome to Pass Presents. I'm Jess from Pass, and today I'm joined by Jason Cargill, Teledyne Fleur's technical sales specialist. Welcome. Hi. Now you're here today to talk to us about the Teledyne Fleur EXX thermal camera series. You're going to walk us through the range and talk to us about the capabilities and features of these cameras. Hopefully you'll find this informative and interesting. However, if we do miss anything, please feel free to leave a question in the comments and remember to like and subscribe and share this video with anyone you think might find it interesting. Okay, so first question, when we talk about the EXX series, which models are we actually talking about? Okay, with the EXX series, it's based on this format of camera, which is a, a pistol grip camera. Mm -hmm. um, we have other pistol grip cameras within the range, but this is classed as, as, as the premium range of uh, handheld pistol grip camera. Essentially, we, we move through different models within the range, which yep. increases things like thermal resolution, so the detector sizes change as you move from one camera to the next. Uh, this example I've got hold of here is called the E96, mm -hmm. which is the top of the range camera within the EXX range. And then we start at the entry point with, a, with an E52. So we have an E52, E54, E76, E86, E96. Again, the main difference between the models is the fact that the infrared resolution increases as you move through the range. Mm -hmm. And what that means uh, essentially is the amount of pixels you've got on an image. An E54 has a detector which is 320 times 240. So if you multiply those numbers together, you get 76,800. I have, hey, a, I have a good authority. So 76,800 pixels uh, is a lot of information. Mm -hmm. And if you equate that to a, I like to use an Excel spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. So if an Excel spreadsheet has 320 columns, 240 rows, your worksheet would have 76,800 cells. Yeah. Every cell has a temperature. Okay. So that is the amount of data you get from, from a thermal image. But when we move up to this camera, this has a 640 by 480 detector. So when we multiply those numbers together, we get 307,000 and some spare change. 76,800 pixels right the way through to over 300,000 pixels. In, a, in the same size device, it's just the amount of data that you get in on your, your thermal image. There are other features which we'll talk about, but essentially it's, it's the detector, the infrared detector size is that is the biggest difference between each model. And when you talk about each pixel having an individual temperature, is yes. that what we would call radiometric thermal imaging? Is that what that is? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So radiometric is essentially, it's an image with the temperature data embedded in it. Yeah. As opposed to something that would just be, for example, a JPEG, which mm -hmm. is just a nice colourful image. Yeah. Uh, the radiometric images allow, allow the user to analyze. So you can use the software, which we've, uh, the Thermal Studio Suite. Mm -hmm. And within the Thermal Studio Suite, we have three different types of software. So we have Thermal Studio Starter, which is actually a free program that can be downloaded from the, the Flare site. We then have Thermal Studio Standard and Thermal Studio Pro. So Thermal Studio Pro has the additional functionality, such as batch processing, for example. Yeah. Um, just allows people who take a lot of thermal images to be able to process them all quickly and put them in a report. Could you talk to us a bit more about how the cameras develop through the series? Like what um, additional features are included on the higher models compared to the entry models? One of the major differences is the ability to be able to interchange lenses. So, for example, you can have different fields of view with different lenses. So if you're looking at a target which is quite far away, you'll want to use what we call a telephoto lens, mm -hmm. which essentially brings the object closer to you without you moving closer to the object. So the field of view is less. So for example, we have a 14 degree lens mm -hmm. that we would class uh, as, a, as a telephoto. We do have lower degree lenses as well available for certain cameras, but within this range, we look at a 14 degree lens we then have a 24 degree lens and a 42 degree lens. So the 42 degree lens would allow you to have a wide uh, angle of view. And that can be useful for building applications if we're looking at the outside of a building where we might want to get more of an area onto an image. 
but it's also useful if customers are working in smaller environments. So the ability to interchange lenses is, is one of the features which separates the, the, the higher ranges within the, the XX range. So you've got the flexibility of the lenses and also these lenses are auto calibration. In days gone by, you used to have to send the camera back to the manufacturer to be calibrated with the new lens. Yeah. So having the flexibility to be able to add new lenses as you move through, or maybe when budget becomes available, yeah. is, is another advantage with, with this range of cameras as well. And that's why when we look at the entry point of this range, so the E52 and E54 models, they're only manual focus only. Okay. So those lenses can't be changed, but they can still be manually focused. So basically with the camera here, you have the ability to manually focus the camera, which is from a control perspective can be very useful mm -hmm. at times. Even though there's technology built into the devices where you can have automatic focus, which is another feature of this premium range when you when you move up to the higher models in the range. So automatic focus based either on a laser point. So it will use a laser to focus the image or it will you, it will look at the image in regards to thermal contrast and it will work out the best focus for the image based on, on the thermal contrast. So essentially you have three ways of focusing this device manually and automatic with either laser or with thermal contrast. And just, just talking about the lenses, so what size lens do the entry models come with? The entry models will come with a 24 degree lens. Okay, and are these cameras compatible with the dual field of view lenses? Yes, Yeah. they are. Could you say a bit more about those please? Yeah, so the dual field of view lens is essentially, it's called flex view, mm -hmm. and it allows the user to fit a lens onto a camera which has two fields of view within one lens. Okay. So whereas if you had a 24 degree and a 14 degree lens and you'd have to interchange them in the field, yeah. we have a model now which is both of those field of views in one lens. And the important thing is they're optically individual. Okay. So it's optically a 14 degree and with the press of a button, it's optically 24 degree. So that means that if you're in the field, you have a target that might be further away than you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. You can press the button on the camera to essentially change to 14 degree and bring the objects, uh, bring, essentially bring the object closer in the, in the frame. So it's not a zoom lens. No. It doesn't zoom up or it doesn't use digital zoom. It's two separate uh, fields of view, which allows you to get more pixels onto your target. And pixels on targets is really useful. Uh, it's really important when it comes to uh, thermography. Uh, so considering the different capabilities of the cameras, uh, would you recommend them for different applications, different scenarios, different industries? Yeah. Um, ultimately, it comes down to available budget, and uh, you know if budgets are tight, it's the camera and maintenance departments. But you still want the ability to have a manually focusing camera. You know you can look at the entry point C52, E54. You can't change the lenses, but they both supplied with a 24 degree lens, two slightly different um, thermal resolutions. But ultimately, it's still a very capable device which can give you good data in regards to identifying potential thermal anomalies uh, from a predictive maintenance perspective. And then so moving through the range, what would you recommend the, the... Quality of the image and ultimately it's all about the thermal image. Particularly electrical utility companies prefer the higher resolution because some of the objects can be far away. If we think of um, you know a tower or a pylon, whichever terminology you use, they can be quite far away from the ground. Yeah. So having a, a clearer image with a higher resolution thermal detector is, is useful. So higher resolutions, it's really down to preference you know, with the customer. I mean, ultimately, even if you looked at the whole flare range, all the cameras that we supply can, can do an extremely good job of identifying thermal anomalies. But with these type of cameras, you do get differences in temperature range. So for example, this model will operate up to 1500 degrees centigrade. Mm -hmm. If you have an application that requires 1498 degrees centigrade, then you need to offer this model from a capability perspective. Uh, the other models can um, operate around the 650 degree mark. Part of the application that you're looking for to try and tie down the correct device for, for the, the right value for the customer as, as a solution. So thermal imaging resolution is, is one of those factors, but also what is the thermal sensitivity of the device? And that's usually measured in something called millikelvin. So if we have a 40 or a 50 millikelvin camera, it can identify changes in temperature of 0.04 or 0.05 of a degree okay. centigrade. So all of these devices are very sensitive, but then this EXX range also has some additional features built in, such as GPS, for example. Okay. You can tell exactly where on the map that image was taken from. So there's, there's that kind of data, but we also have uh, radiometric video capabilities. So not only can you record a video as an MPEG, 
which is just a nice video, you can have radiometric, which is a word you mentioned earlier. So you can have a video which has radiometric data, which can be analyzed. So if you're looking at any kind of process as it's running, you can do a thermal analysis of a, of a video as well. And it's a touchscreen operation as well. So it allows you to use the touchscreen really easily to navigate the menus. Uh, we still have a, a navigation pad is what we call it on the back here. Mm -hmm. So if you're wearing gloves, for example, you can still navigate easily with these buttons to open yeah. up the menus and, and to use the functionality within the camera, or it's a touchscreen device as well. Who are the users of these cameras then? Are they, you mentioned utility companies, so yeah. who else would you recommend them to? Across the board, from an industrial perspective, it's uh, electrical mechanical maintenance is, is the majority of the uses for this, this style of camera. Yeah. Um, although we do have, with the high resolution of something like an E96, you could have some building applications where you're looking at the energy performance of a building, for example. So Even though it lends itself more to another range, which we'll talk about later on, you have the uh, thermal resolution on this camera to give you really um, excellent clarity of detail. So what you're looking for on a building, it's infiltration of air or it's exfiltration of air. And you're looking at the air movement through around windows or doorways. And essentially, like we all try and do, but we're all trying to reduce our energy consumption. So sometimes these cameras can be used for building applications, but majority is your predictive, preventative maintenance types of application. And this range, where would you position it within FLIR's catalogue of cameras? So is it the mid-range? premium range we, we classify this as kind of the professional store premium yeah. uh, range of camera why should i choose a teledyne for exx thermal camera the additional functionality mm -hmm. so it's the touch screen it's the ability to have the one touch level and span which allows you very easily to navigate the menu touch the screen of the object you're interested in and the camera will automatically thermally tune to that particular point you touched on the screen so it's that kind of additional technology as well, plus things like the voice recording, which can be built in. So you can record a voice note when you take a thermal image, which can be useful. Mm -hmm. The cameras also have things like MSX on them, which is multi-spectral dynamic imaging. Essentially, you are embossing a thermal image with visual data. Because on these cameras, we actually have, we have a thermal lens, yeah. and then we have a five megapixel digital lens at the bottom. Yeah. So every time you pull the, the trigger, you're taking two images at the same time. And then you can utilize those images independently within the software, or you can utilize the detail of a visual digital image on a thermal image, which allows you to see information that you wouldn't normally see through just a thermal lens. Would that bring out sort of details like writing on things and things yes. like that? Yeah, so for example, we could be looking at a motor. Um, if we look at a motor with just a thermal image, we'll see wherever the, the heat energy is being or whether the infrared energy is being released. And it will all be a nice colourful image, but you won't see any other details. Now that motor might have a rating plate on it, which gives us various information parameters about the motor. If you switch to MSX, you'd be able to see that detail through, through a thermal image. Now the fact that you have the ability to automatically focus with this device using laser or thermal contrast and have the ability to also manually focus the device. You should always be in a position where you have a, a crisp, well-focused image. You've got tools on board here to help you capture that well-focused image. Yeah. So it's that kind of functionality which becomes more useful uh, to customers of, of this range of camera. Yeah. I was going to ask about the pistol shake design. Why has it been designed in this way? It's like anything else. The more equipment you build into things, the heavier objects can become. Yeah. So this is a good solid piece of equipment. It's obviously designed with the usual capabilities of, of a flare product. Uh, what you can have on this device as well is a hand strap. Okay. So when you put the hand strap onto the device, which is supplied with the camera, it bears the weight of the camera yeah. in the palm of your hand. But what you've got is the ability to manipulate this camera very quickly. So pistol grip, it's kind of, it's nice and easy to use. Um, so you've talked about the MSX imaging, but uh, I wondered if you could touch on the Ultramax enhancement. Yes, yeah, so there's just another feature within this range of camera, the premium range. So Ultramax essentially is its setting which you can turn on within the menu system. Mm -hmm. And what it does, it will essentially increase the level of pixels of your thermal image. So when you put the thermal image into the anal analysis software, you end up with a higher pixel count. So for example, if we look at this particular camera, where we're already looking at 307,000 pixels with the E96, if we turn Ultramax on, we're going over a million pixels in regards to the thermal image in the software. So if you're looking at something very detailed 
Ultra Max can be really useful yeah. for really clarifying some of those smaller areas that you're interested in. How does it do that? It basically, it, it, it takes a little bit longer to capture the image and you'll notice a little blue disc spin on the back when yeah. Ultra Max is turned on. Only a, a second. But what it's doing is taking a number of images and then what it does, it interpolates the pixels together. Mm -hmm. So essentially, it's, it's mixing pixels, pixels together. So those, they're crossing over each other, if you like. Yeah. So you kind of multiply the effect of the, uh, the pixel count in a, in a thermal image. And does it stay radiometric when it does it's, that? Yeah, it's still radiometric, yeah. yeah. So the integrated Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Yeah. Could you tell us about why that's advantageous? We have a, a software available called Flare Ignite. And Flare Ignite is a cloud-based service. You can pair that camera to your Flare Ignite account and you can then send the images you take. You can either select them to automatically upload to the cloud or to manually upload at a later date yourself. But essentially the Wi-Fi connection allows you to do that. So Wi-Fi can be important and also Bluetooth can be important for linking to, for example, you wanted to use a uh, Flare Tools mobile app yeah. on a tablet, for example, you'd be able to link to your tablet. Test and measurement equipment we have in the range can be connected to thermal cameras as well. So it's it's connectivity more than anything. And is that the, the meter link compatible? Yes, it is, that's yeah. correct. And with uploading the cameras to the cloud, does that make collaborative working easier? Yes, because what you can do with, the, with, the, with Flare Ignite is you create an account where you can share and give other people access to that account. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to capture the data yourself, someone else was going to analyze the images they'd be able to get access to your, your account as well. But yeah, essentially it's a collaborative effort in, in regards to sharing information. And sometimes from a maintenance perspective, if there's a serious problem, you can get that data quickly to someone who can make an, or a decision to approve a, yeah. a repair or approve the costs. Is there a report generating capabilities on the camera? Well, we, 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 have a, we have a facility called Inspection Route. So Inspection Route is a firmware um, inclusion on the devices now. Uh, on this on the premium cameras what it allows you to do you can invest in a piece of software called root creator it's applicable to thermal studio pro you engage root creator on your pc you build a route of somewhere that you're going to do an inspection so we could be in switch room a yeah. and we're looking at switch panels one you can basically build a cascading report of all the assets you need to look at on this particular inspection yeah. you build that onto your PC, you then use the SD card from the camera into the PC, you download the rootx file as it's called onto your camera and then when you engage inspection route on the camera, which is again you can turn on or off, it will then walk you through the analysis using root creator and inspection route. And what that means is again this is about giving the ability for other people within the team to utilize the equipment without being fully trained per se, it just means that you've built the routes and they just do what the camera then asks them to do. So yeah. go to switch room one, look at panel A, this image, you can also have ability to look back at a previous image, yeah. which is called a reference image. So while you're there at the time, you can use a reference image on the camera to see does it look different to the last time? Mm -hmm. So is it hotter than it was last time? Yeah. So there's a lot of flexibility within the software now to, to really help customers on asset management. Yeah, flexibility and streamlining, but also like it seems to make condition monitoring quite a bit easier because you can track how well, the, the, equipment the, the, is developing. I yeah, but the, 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 the thing with condition monitoring and asset management and predictive maintenance, repeatability is really important. Mm -hmm. And what that basically means is if I'm taking an image of a motor today, Ideally, the next time we take an image of the same motor, we want to be in the same position. We want to be the same distance away. So we want all the parameters to be the same Yeah. to check that there is a difference. So that's where having the route built into the camera becomes extremely useful. So before we go into the final two questions, um, I just wanted to ask why you think the EX X series thermal cameras are so enduringly popular with users. Every new iteration of camera has some development or some Im improvement based on existing users, feedback based on research and development work. And, you know, this is the latest iteration of what, you know, what has been a, a successful range of camera. Yeah. Uh, all we're doing is we're, we're, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. You know, they look very similar to the predecessors yeah. to look at because the design is fine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's comfortable, it's ergonomic, it's, it's easy to use, but it's, the, it's more what goes on inside the device. So when we look at some of the additional functionalities, but really it's about ease of use, 
It's about being able to capture data easily. It's about being able to communicate that data with other people easily. And really for the camera to take the brunt of the work that needs to be done. Yeah. And really what you want to be able to do is go and point the camera at something, to something that you're interested in, pull the trigger and record an image. And if you've got a camera which has got automatic focusing features and that kind of thing and uh, ability to one touch level and span, it just means the user experience is a lot better. Um, so is there anything else you think we should know about the Teledyne 30 XX series thermal cameras? I think it's important to sort of come across, you know, this isn't kind of just a nice decoration in the background. I mean, this is the way the cameras are supplied. Yeah. You know, it's an extremely robust case, which allows you to travel to store the camera as well. You know, we have an injection molded mm -hmm. uh, foam insert, so the camera fits. Keeps it safe. Exactly, fits well. The cameras have the facility to have the additional lenses we've yeah. spoken about. And what you'd have here, if you only purchase the camera with one lens, you still have the two apertures in here. So these apertures come as part of the case. So if you invest in that lens, like we mentioned previously, you can add them into the camera box and it's still all in the same place. So yeah. the capacity is there to store additional lenses as you move down the line. We have a battery charger here. We have the room for the two batteries, which is supplied with the device. And then we have some other accessories such as neck strap and hand strap and that kind of thing. So it's just, you know, people don't buy a thermal camera based on the case it comes in. But the fact is, nice it's, it's, it's part of the package. And, it, you know, it's from a, you invest a, you know, a lot of money in a piece of equipment like this. You want it to be stored safely, be able to be transported safely. And kind of, you know, we, we do it extremely well within the Teledyne flare range. Yeah, it matches the camera's own durability. It does. Yeah. Um, so finally, if you were to summarise the Teledyne Flirt the XX series thermal cameras in three words, what would they be? Uh, robust, reliable, accurate. Right, thank you for speaking with us today, Jason. You're welcome. Um, Glad to be here. Yeah, we covered a lot there, so I hope you found that informative. If we did miss anything, please leave a question in the comments and remember to like and subscribe and share this video with anyone you think might find it useful. You can find all information about Teledyne Fleur's EXX series thermal cameras on our website, www.tester.co.uk.